The interesting thing about surrendering to God is finding the enormous peace that comes with it. So I was working for Microsoft. You know, this was my dream job. And I felt like finally, you know, I found my spot. So then January, I walk into my desk and I just remember trying to speak and I just couldn't feel my face. And so I sent a message. I just remember I wrote help. From there, I remember there's a flurry of, of people. I remember there's a lot of activity going on. And at this point in time, I was not breathing anymore. We got to the emergency room and I was dead on a rim. And so they were telling my family that this was it. And I remember my mom, it, when she tells you the story, she felt in her belly, she felt this anger, right? And she's like, no, this isn't the promise that I was given. This isn't the promise I was given. And so she reached out to our pastor, um, reached out to family, and people I didn't even know, they began to fill that hospital. I remember the moment I woke up. And right before it, I felt a presence, actually. And I remember I just felt the voice say, not yet. And when I felt the voice say, not yet, I opened my eyes. And my sister, she was leaning over me. And I looked at her, her eyes got really, really big and she just started screaming. I mean, just terrified, screaming, Mom, Mom, he's awake, he's awake, he's awake. And so yeah, the doctors, they were gonna take me away to go do all kinds of tests and exams. They couldn't understand. This made no sense. You're not supposed to be here. That's what he was telling me. You would think after being basically raised from the dead, right in the hospital, then after that, Jesus and I would be best buds. But it didn't happen like that. Quite to the contrary. I think that I found every reason in the world not to be buds. It wasn't fair that I was so sick. It wasn't fair that I had to go to the hospital. It wasn't fair that I was gonna need heart surgeries. It wasn't fair that I couldn't, you know, run and, and jump like everybody else. So it made me angry. It, it just became a very, very dark time. You know, instead of running to him, I ran as far away as I possibly could. I started to drink. If anything remotely even sounded like the word God, you know, I'd shut it down and run away from it. And, you know, we're not gonna have anything to do with this. So one December, after everything, I went to my mom's house for dinner. And um, I got out of the car. My mom was coming down the porch and we, we met in the driveway and my legs came out. I, I remember feeling myself in slow motion just fall face first in this puddle of mud. And when I hit the water, I just began to sob. And it was, it was a real profound desperation at this point. I remember in her driveway just crying out, look at me, you know, look at me. Look where I'm at. Look where I've wound up. I'm alone, I don't have kids. I'm, you know, I'm drunk. What am I gonna do? And my mom came and, and she, she grabbed my head. She grabbed me on my head like this. And she said, in the name of Jesus, she's like, all you've got to do is surrender to him. Surrender your life, surrender your will. All of these things, these wheels that you're trying to spin on your own, surrender them. <laughs> as silly as it might sound, I was like, who's going to love me? And then I, I didn't hear it here. I heard it here. I never stopped loving you. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. I think it would have been insane for me to continue to try to do it on my own. So I surrendered. When I think about all of the dark moments that I've had to experience in my life, it wasn't until I surrendered my life to God completely that I really started to see the magnitude of His love.